What's going on everyone, my name's Tenebris, and one of the craziest things added in the Base Assault update was the opportunity for us to expand into new base building locations. With epic views, pre-built structures, larger spaces, and sometimes smaller spaces, there's a lot of variety in the control points you can choose from here in Generation Zero. We have 8 control points in the game, and today I'm going to give you dudes my ultimate tier list of control points so you can know which one is best for you. Which will pay off in the long run in a huge way, being able to choose your base locations then have set spots to fight Phoenix bases at. The brand new gameplay loops we have in this game are incredible, and we're just cracking the surface here. We're going to compare these based on their size, what they offer as unique features, and lastly, how they fare as base defense locations. Then tomorrow we'll have a video on tips and tricks for these control points when they're taken over by Phoenix. You won't want to miss those, so don't forget to subscribe while you're here. So we'll go through each of these locations today and then tally them on our proper tier list at the end of the video. First up is the classic, Tylovedon Base the starter base, and the one we've all been using for the better part of this past year. As the starter spot, it's very plain and there isn't a heck of a lot going on in the build space, save for a few rock outcrops. But Tylovedon does offer one of the best scenic views in all of the game. Due to its openness, you can get some incredible views of the sunrise at this spot, and that's definitely a plus in my books. The build space itself is very open and relatively flat. This gives you a lot of room to experiment with different approaches to base building, which is perfect for getting started. The rocks themselves though don't play much of a factor in your building. They used to be useful for base defense, but with spawns being much more randomized now, it's not as reliable to trap them. And since they don't intrude into the build space enough, it's not functionable to try to use them for building. I think the simplicity of Tylovedon is its biggest benefit. If you just want some quick and easy base building, this might wind up being the spot for you. One of the biggest things that spices up base defense now in the base assault update are pre-built structures in our building zones. And since Tylovedon lacks them, it makes base defense a little stale, at least in comparison to these new locations. This does mean you have to rely on the base you build a little bit more to protect your command center as well. Pre-builds are indestructible, so without them you lose a small bit of reliability in your base. Next up, Lil Dam Base, which is a little bit bigger than Ty Lovedon's area. It offers a nice water feature that can even benefit you in wave defense if you're lucky, a perched location for the command center, making it actually a difficult spot to fully protect, but with a sloping hill you can utilize this space for a lot of unique build designs. Quick road access is something brand new to bases, where you can now have access to roads quickly with your bike instead of having to bike down a mountainside. The pond has a small spot you could build at too, being able to utilize it either aesthetically or as some sort of a trap. The build space is clear, just like Tylovedon, spare a few dilapidated cars on the right hand roadside, which can also be useful for uh, designing bases or getting into the base building system. But a unique thing about Lil Dam that no other base has is a naturally rounded end due to the road that passes along it. You can use this end to build a simple circular base very easily. In terms of combat though, Lil Dam is a heck of a battlefield. Having varying heights, a clear open space, and the precarious command center perched in plain sight, not only do you have to rely on what you build due to the lack of pre-builds, but you also have to design with tact to ensure a successful base defense. This is a great area for you to test out the more defensive features of base building and see what works for you. Now we can load our own ammo into turrets, and it is a massive game changer for base defense. Even though this area is very open just like Tylovedon is, the water feature and sloping hill really add to how you can creatively approach building your base.
Now for possibly the most natural place to build your base, Storskogen Park, a roadside park overlooking Lake Avern. Even though a large amount of this build space is taken up by the road and forestry in the area, the smaller build space still leaves room for you to utilize and, if anything, provides a very strong conceptual backbone to your builds. This location provides a lot of natural cover from the rocks and trees, but has a couple larger open spots for you to build in. It provides a really nice balance that you don't really get at other bases. Now, this area is pretty good for base defense with all the natural cover. Having the machines run at you from the forest is a heck of a sight too, but realistically I find this place is best for building and not so much wave defense. Still, it doesn't mean the defense here is bad, that's more just a personal preference. But again, one of the strongest points of this base is how it's overlooking Lake Avern. This is a heck of a view of the valley, definitely on par with Tylovden's sunrise view. Now for the base defense. I'm trying not to be salty, but I had an unfortunate crash here and didn't have the supplies to rebuild this real slick conceptual build that I had set up here. So while this combat footage rolls out, I want to know. Would you dudes want to see some more base building videos from me? Let me know in the comments down below. But again, the wave defense here is actually a lot of fun. The natural cover gives you a lot to work with, and fighting the machines from the forest has this real impending doom kind of vibe. You have enough space to really work with too, and even though machine spawns are randomized, you can still set up some real easy bottlenecks in the area. Okay, so next up, maybe my favorite location from all of the new base locations we can build at, Sunbeam Camping. With the highest amount of pre-built structures, cozy fire stores that provide some of our first base locations with interiors, a maypole, a fire pit, and a small rock wall, Sunbeam Camping requires the least amount of building to have a functionable base. Using the rooftops of nearby pre-builds gives you a huge advantage in base defense, and the room for conceptualizing an epic base is very, very ripe. These pre-builds, as I said earlier, are indestructible, so they serve as perfect spots to fight machines from, conserve your resources, and kind of get a leg up here in base building. If anything, I'd say Sun Bee Camping is the ultimate first base you could have in the game, just purely on a level of practicality. And even though it might not seem like a huge feature, interiors play a huge role in having a base be an immersive place for you to engage with, and it's something I hope we'll see much more of as we go through our base building endeavors. Also finally, a place for us to sh Make s'mores, man! If food ever gets added in Generation Zero's long life, maybe fireplaces could serve some sort of a function like that. And these rooftops, again, huge benefit to combat, and currently maybe the second highest position you can take in wave defense? Absolutely perfect for sniping. If you set up scaffolding in between the buildings too, you greatly increase your coverage. Now. Longtime viewers of my channel will know I am a huge fan of urbanized combat, and some bee camping, though it's not entirely urban, provides a super unique base defense scenario where you have all these buildings that you can take advantage of, utilizing scaffolding as well as the tall walls that now have perches for scaffolding too. When you climb up on these roofs, you have just like a perfect advantage above the machines uh, to go around with your PVG and just absolutely wreck house. But speaking of good sniping spots, we'll be having a new base building pack coming soon that will have a sniper mount. So I'm hoping that will give us a really tall structure that we can place on our own. But still, I feel like in base defense's ongoing meta, pre-builds are going to play a huge role in the future. I'll be reviewing that support pack right when it drops, so stay tuned for that. 
Now, for a kind of odd base, the Grand Higget Lumberyard. And I say it's odd because of its shape. It's like this big freaking rectangle, dude. But it offers some unique set pieces for you to build with. And similar to Storskogen, provides a conceptual backbone that you can totally use to make really creative bases. The shipping crates in nearby building offer a unique vantage point, and the tractor serves as an infinitely regenerating trap that you can have fun setting up a variety of traps with. Try setting some EMP traps or utilizing landmines to automatically set off the trap when the machines get nearby the tractor. There's a ton of different ways you can experiment with this tractor, and it respawns every single time you uh, quit the menu and jump back into the game. Maybe fast travel too, but I'm pretty sure that it's just the quit to menu method with vehicles. And then, the fact that this place is just asking you to build, like, your own little resistance themed lumber yard, uh, <laughs> I really think that the, uh, uh, like, strong concept direction for some of these bases, uh, is a really good one and really kind of re will be a potentially like refreshing thing in the future of base building here in Generation Zero. For the base defense end, this is where things are a bit of a mixed bag for Grand Higgin. I think this spot's good, but the deforested areas can be messy to get through easily on foot, and conceptual builds usually don't last very long in wave defense and can be a real pain to upkeep. So I docked it down based on that. But outside of that, the vantages, plus the general openness of the deforested forest region, makes for some very good combat and easy fronts to cover. Also, pro tip, load your rocket turrets up with, like, crazy rockets. It's a heck of a good time, man. If you load the turrets up with uh, corrosive, radioactive, or EMP, you're going to be doing less damage than if you load it up with high explosive. But the benefit of those status effects really, really outweighs uh, the cons. With EMP rounds, you can basically stun lock machines. With radioactive rounds, you have all the machines blinded without risking irradiating yourself. And with the corrosive rounds, I haven't been able to try them out yet, but I'm sure that that would be a good time too. Now, Ostermark, our first taste of what building a base in the farmlands will be like. And it seems tough, dude. The vast open space just leaves whatever you've built as a sitting dock. With barely any locational features to take advantage of, Ostermark is there for if you want a challenge. Another fun thing about these new base locations is that you can encounter machine spawns wandering up to your base pretty frequently depending on the base location. Ostermark and Grand Higget are both hotspots, so you can encounter quite a bit there. And again, in the process of maybe having growable food come to the future of Generation Zero, uh, maybe having a base in the farmlands already set up might give you an advantage if that ever does come around. There's also a couple features in the area just off the farmlands plot that you could potentially build some interesting builds with. Not so much the small rock, but the dilapidated cars, maybe. You can maybe set up a small target range and use the cars as your shooting position. But really, with Ostermark, I think it was made to just feel expansive and offer a large amount of relatively flat land to build on. And the nice thing about having a base at this location is that right nearby you can find the uh, military set spawn tank uh, with a rail gun and he's very easy to take down. Uh, even though you do have a closer safe house, it's still nice to just maybe have a base nearby so that that way you could have like everything at your disposal that you would need. When it comes to the base defense, as I said earlier, Ostermark is hard mode. It is absolutely base defense on hard mode. The lack of cover in the area and the lack of, like, you know, uh, buildings and uh, things that you could interact with and utilize and strategize with uh, sets up a kind of, like, blitz fight where you just have to kind of butt heads with the machines really hard and see who wins.
For our second last location, Gardberg Mine. A fantastic mountainside mine just asking for creative builds, offering awesome wave defense variables with two set heights that you can work with, choke points, pre-built. Gardberg Mine really does have the entire package of the base building experience. The only thing this place is lacking is an enterable mine shaft, but that maybe would be giving too much in a base location. But then again, Really, I think if we were to get a location where we could set up one of our bases in a cave, like a big massive cave, that would be a really cool spot. The lower area features a support for the upper area that's built out of these kind of ruin-esque stone bricks, and that actually adds quite a bit of flavor to what you build down on this lower area. And the two slopes leading upwards to the upper area are just begging to be bottlenecked. Traps, emplacements, turrets, you name it, it's going to be good to use on these slopes. Then you have two pre-built structures that you can't enter, but will serve as awesome vantage points for you to cover pretty much the entire mine location. Then, similar to Sunbee Camping, we have a location with an interior in this dilapidated shed, which, again, just kind of proves a, uh, provides a little bit of a comforting abode in the midst of your base. And lastly, Crane! Honestly, Gardberg is just an all-around great spot that really, like, really checks off every single thing in the list that you would want for a good base here in Generation Zero. When it comes to the base defense, you have a number of locations that the machines will spawn in from, but they're all actually relatively easy to predict. So that makes trapping and setting up show points in this location uh, at Gardberg Mine very, very easy and very satisfying to pull off. You do have to be careful when you're standing on top of pre-built structures though, because hunters really like to jump up and just slam dunk you in the face. And lastly, Elgbakken, an awesome city-side base location featuring a ski lift. This is another location that, just like Gardberg, offers the whole package. Great conceptual options for builds, an awesome area for base defense with predictable machine spawns offering for some of the spiciest traps and bottlenecks. Locationally, Elgbakken actually stands out amongst the rest, being so close to so many cities uh, you or in small townships and stuff like that. You have tons of opportunities to go off from Elgbakken and do some really thorough looting as well as machine combat. There's Baldur's Vol just nearby, and Baldur's Vol is always tripping. This area also offers some very unique pre-builds alongside the ski lift. You have a massive comms tower and as well a couple military uh, storage buildings too. So you could definitely build this place up as like some sort of a military sanctuary for, uh, you know, survivors to get to. Uh, there is a ton of room for conceptual builds in this location. Heck, roleplay that you're the last standing hot dog stand in all of Ostertorn. Resistance fighters everywhere would line up at your stand for fizzy pops and footlongs. You could bridge between the two military buildings really easily with just a handful of scaffolding, and you can create some really interesting setups utilizing these buildings. And Outside of that, Elbakken does actually have a very nice view of, I believe it's like the, what? eastern part of the farmlands there? Can't go wrong, man! And when it comes to the wave defense, as I said, the machines spawn in uh, kind of easy to predict locations. It is randomized, but still, if you prepare in a certain direction and the machines spawn there eventually, then the pre preparations paid off. I'm not gonna make you guys sit through another wave defense here for too long, but EMP rounds, man, MVP out of the rock line. Look, this poor tank, he didn't even stand a chance, man.
So now that we're at the end of this in-depth analysis, what's the tier list? Well, first up in the C class is just Ty Loveden. Poor starter base, but this is usually what happens with starter things in video games. Then for the B tier, we have Ostermark and Grand Higget. Both are good base locations, but might be better left for Phoenix to have repeatable base assault locations that you can head back to. A tier is Elgbakken, Lil Dam, and Storskogen. These places are awesome base locations, offering either strong conceptual opportunities or base defense arenas. And for S tier, we have a tie between Sunbee Camping and Guardburg. Both of these are locations you need to build a base at in the forest region, hands down. You can have four bases, so outside of these guys, you can kind of pick what's best suited for you for your next tier. So there we go, my dudes. A huge amount of work went into this video. I had to work around the currently buggy base assault system in a big way to make this happen. So if you could leave a like, it goes a huge way in helping everyone in the Generation Zero community know what's best for their time. So cheers, my dudes. Thank you very much for watching, and I will catch you all in the next one. Until then, peace.